Hey, what's up guys? It's Loki. Today, I'm going to show you the editing software I use. It's probably my favorite software to use when I edit my videos. So hit that like and subscribe button and click the notification bell so you don't miss when I live stream. Also, while you're down in the description, don't forget to check out my merch store and the Amazon links for the gear that I use. And while you're at it, you may as well check out my Instagram too, which is where I post a bunch of funny and all the behind the scenes stuff for my videos. Well, enough of that. I'm going to show you how to get the editing software. So my personal favorite video editor is a program called DaVinci Resolve and to download it when you come to the website it'll show you a page like this. Scroll all the way down to the bottom and then there'll be a DaVinci Resolve download button. So you download it here, choose your operating system, enter in your information and then hit register and download. Once you finish installing it, it should pop up with a shortcut on your desktop so just open that. It'll open up DaVinci Resolve. It'll come up with your project, so just make a new project. When you first open up a new project, the first thing you want to do is come up to File, and then go down to Project Settings. And then under Master Settings, choose the timeline resolution that you want the video to be. So I'm going to do 4K right here. Under Timeline Frame Rate, set it to the frame rate that you want your video to be. 30 or 60 for me is what I usually use for YouTube. So I just select... 30 for this case because I'm doing 4k 30 make sure you set this correctly because after you import a clip you can't change the timeline frame rate so make sure you set it to what you want now now if you scroll down a little bit there will be an option for optimized media set this to choose automatically and dnx hrlb are the ones that I found to run the smoothest so you can save this and then also you want to come up to DaVinci Resolve go to preferences go to user and then go to project save and load and then make sure live save is ticked and then click save that'll make sure that your project is saved so you don't have to worry about losing your project so now you can start adding clips the way to do that is to come down here to media pool and then it'll come up with your storage options so just go to wherever your videos are saved mine is on the desktop i'm going to go to desktop and drag my video in you see here it says the clip has a different frame rate than the current project setting so I do not want to change my timeline frame rate because I set it to what I wanted in the project settings. So just click don't change here. You can also drag your clips or files or audio in straight from the folder or the desktop right into the timeline if you want. You don't have to go into here, but it's nice to go in here just to organize everything first. And you can also set favorites on the side here for the different folders that you want to access really quickly. So the way to do that is to right click and add folder to favorites you can add whatever folder you want so once you have your clips and files put in you can come down to the timeline which is where you'll spend the most time actually editing your video if you come up to workspace you can click full screen which will make it full screen as opposed to windowed also up in this top bar you have your option to save project save project as under edit you have undo redo undo history cut copy paste paste insert so now you can bring in your clip into the timeline and use this to zoom in and out onto your clip so we have our clip right here which you can also lock the video and the audio together with this button right here so we'll just lock those together real quick so they stay synced the main things you'll need to edit videos are the selection button which allows you to move clips around the razor tool which allows you to splice clips and move them also if you unselect the like link button you can move the audio and the video so it's not like linked together so to delete a clip in the timeline you right click it and delete selected just deletes it and leaves a blank space ripple delete which i usually use the most actually shifts the rest of the clips to fill the gap so it'll just delete the part and just shift everything back the audio tracks are down here in the bottom and you can mute solo so you only hear this audio track as opposed to other ones. If you have multiple audio tracks you can mute different ones and solo. If you want to stay organized and change the color of different clips right click it go to clip color and now you can change the color of the clip to whichever you want also applies to audio clips you can change the color to stay organized while you're editing 
And also to stay organized, you can add markers at wherever your playhead is on the timeline so you can mark specific points and just snap right to them. The next really useful thing to stay organized and just do broad edits on a clip and just merge clips together is using the compound clip. So highlight whatever multiple clips you want to merge together, right click them and come up here, click compound clip and then create and it merges them into one seamless clip. You can also do the opposite of that and if you have a compound clip that you want to turn into multiple regular clips again, you just right click it and decompose in place and it'll bring it back to the split up clips that you had before. Now if you want to change the speed of a clip, you go to it, right click, and change clip speed. And you can come here, change the speed multiplier. Just make sure you have stretch to fit and ripple sequence take to right here. And then it'll ripple it. And now it'll speed it up, slow it down, and now you have your clip at whatever speed multiplier that you selected. So obviously you would want to preview your video before you render it. So up here is the preview window. If you middle click, you can drag it around, zoom in with the scroll wheel and middle click to drag around. And also if you press control F, it makes it full screen. So you have a full screen preview right here. Control F to exit out of that again. Now you can add some spice to your video, add some transitions over here. So I'm going to add additive dissolve transition. So you can change the duration of the transition by clicking the end and moving in and out. Or you can come up here to the inspector and change the duration of the transition up here. And you can also change the start ratio and ratio, reverse it, ease in or out, and change the transition curve. Also in the inspector here, if you select a clip, you can change the composite mode. If you have overlayer clips, opacity, zoom in, zoom out, change the position, rotation angle, flip and crop all of these settings with the little diamond can be keyframe so if you come to position and you want to change the position you can also keyframe multiple at a time so i'm going to change the zoom position over here i'm going to move to this spot and i'm going to move it over here so as you can see it moves the video based on the keyframes you set so you can do a lot of cool stuff with that and if you come over here you can come over to this tab under audio change the volume and add an equalizer to it really quickly. So you can do a basic equalizer on all the audio clips that you have up here in the inspector under the audio tab. And if you come down here onto your audio track, you can also change the volume by dragging this bar up and down and it'll change the audio volume and it shows you how many decibels increase or decrease in the volume that you're changing. And then your mute buttons and solo track buttons are right here as well. You also have the master audio controls over here. So you can adjust the volume over here that won't affect your final render and everything will stay in relation. But this is just like the program volume control. So you can turn this down if it's too loud or anything and also mute it. And you can come down here to the mixer and change each audio tracks volume and add some effects on here and stuff. Now all of these tabs are kind of in order for the different processes of video editing. So the next tab under here is Fusion, which they kind of merged with Resolve in the last update, which you don't really need to worry too much about this, but if you want to see a tutorial on how to motion track text, smack the shit out of that like button and let me know in the comments and I'll make it happen. So the next main tab that you'll need to go to is the color tab down here. So the first thing in the color tab that you see is your preview window. And if you click up here, you'll have your nodes, which are basically layers that you can add different effects on. So you can add more layers by right clicking one of the nodes, add node and add serial node. And they're basically adding more layers on top of each other. And you can add what are called different LUTs that basically color grade your video for you. So I'm just gonna come down here and I'm gonna add a lot on the first one then you can stack lots on different layers or however you want which is it's basically a preset color grade in the newer versions of resolve they added this tab up here which allows you to add a bunch of different like effects and stuff so my favorite here is camera shake so i'm going to add that here and then it adds camera shake to your clip so you can put up the motion scale speed scale and it basically adds camera shake to your clip. And you can change it smooth, add a lot of motion blur, you can make a smooth camera shake or a really jerky camera shake for whatever effect you're trying to go for. 
The next important part of the color tab, which sort of goes along with the LUTs, is the color wheels. So you can adjust the color of the video with your lift gamma gain and offset changes the whole thing. To add certain color effects on a specific part of the video or clip, you're going to want to come to the window, choose what kind of like selection you want, and you can use the power window to adjust which part you want to be affected by whatever effects you have. So in the power window, if you click the edge, you can adjust like the feathering on the outside so it's a smooth transition. So let me deselect this, and now you can see that it's a smooth box of the effect that I had. So you can do that with a couple of the adjustments. And my favorite in the color tab is the tracker, which if you have a power window, you can track different parts. So it'll track moving objects in the scene and it'll just go with them. So it'll go through and track different objects in the scene. As you can see, it's tracking it. It does a pretty good job of it usually and you can add effects onto moving objects so like if you have someone and you want to brighten their face you add a power window and then make your adjustments and come to the tracker and just align it over their face and press track forward button and it'll track over their face the next tab that you might need is the qualifier tab which is for green screens so if you click on the green part that you want to key out in a green screen video or whatever you can click that and then come here adjust the hue that you want keyed out and then you can come to the key section and then key out the green part of your green screen pretty much what this tab is for blur you can come to blur and add a blur on your video which you can change the specific area area of it with the power window so if you have the power window and you want it to be blurred you can blur only in the power window so that's pretty much all you would need for the basics of the color tab so i'm going to come down to the fairlight tab which they've added in the most recent version of resolve which is basically a full audio editing area that you can adjust all the audio in your entire video it all shows up here on audio tracks which this area is audio only, so you don't need to worry about video. This is just for audio editing and processing. So you can add effects over here. There are a bunch of effects like reverb and stuff. You can add all of that. There's a more in-depth EQ in this tab, which you can mess around with and get the sound exactly how you want it. If you come to dynamics, there is a compressor, which basically just takes all the loud and soft sounds and makes them more equal to each other. So that would be useful if you're like talking, you don't want the volume to like fluctuate a lot. So you would add a compressor and it'll make you sound more professional and like even throughout the whole video. Pan is where basically you adjust where the audio is coming from in 3D space. You don't need to worry too much about that, but you can make some cool effects with that. Then you can add plugins up here in effects and you can add VST plugins. I have a few VST plugins that you can add and there's some built-in ones if you go to Fairlight FX. Now, once you have your video pretty much exactly how you want it, you can come down here to the Deliver tab, which is where you will render your video and change all your settings and stuff. So you want to make sure entire timeline is checked and you want to make sure that the timeline ends where you want your video to end down here. Come up here, click custom settings, and then you can go down to video. Now you can come under your file settings and you can change where you want to save your file. Now the important part for YouTube under video, the best one to do is MP4 H.264 or you can also do QuickTime H.264. I usually stick to MP4 H.264 now and the resolution down here and your frame rate that you want to set. Then quality, leave it at best. Audio, make sure export audio is ticked. Make sure export video is ticked. Audio, you can leave it at A, C. Leave the rest of the stuff how it is. File, you can add a name to your file. Just leave it untitled. And once you're done changing all the settings, click add to render queue. And then you can click start render and it'll start rendering your video.